Welcome back guys, hope you're all doing great and today in this course we're gonna learn how to build a system application which runs successfully in both Windows and as well as Mac. We're gonna build a software called ToDo List where we can add our tasks. So allow me to explain what exact software we are going to build over here. So you can have a look over here, you can see it's having a nice UI which is completely responsive where I can reduce it and even if I'm maximizing it, that will UI will adjust according to that particular screen. Okay, so let me add a new task over here. New task. So once I click this add button, that will be added to our Firestore collection and instantly it will be appeared in the top of the list because the latest added task should be in the top of the list and even if you want to delete it that will be deleted from the task list completely okay so this software is completely built by using flask with python tailwind firestore collections so even if you haven't used any of this text before so i'm going to help you to build this software completely from the ground a layer by layer okay i hope you guys are so excited so without wasting your time Let's get started. Okay then, so before getting started by creating the projects and configuring everything, so please make sure that you installed Python in your machine already. So if you haven't installed Python in your machine, so open up your browser and search for python.org. So go to their official website called python.org and click downloads so that you can find the latest version of the python for either for mac or for your windows so please go ahead and download this and come back and watch this from here so now what we need to do is in this case i already downloaded my python in my machine so I'm just going to close it so before moving further we need to know what exactly the flask is because we are going to use the flask to build this so flask is nothing but a micro web framework written in python so basically we are going to create a website and we are going to convert that website into a system application which runs perfectly in both these platforms okay so flask is classified as a micro framework because it is a it doesn't require any particular libraries or tools to run it and it is completely easy because if you have a, a basic idea of the python flask it's completely user friendly to build a web application okay so i'm going to explain everything one by one later so please continue watching okay then so now let's create a new project folder in our desktop so right click create a new folder called to do list and open up in our visual studio code let me open the terminal and let me open it in my visual studio code and here we go so hit the ctrl j to open the terminal integrated terminal of your visual studio code and here i need to make sure whether the python is installed properly or not so what you need to do is you just need to run the command called python hyphen hyphen version if you're using windows if you're using mac you need to run python 3 hyphen hyphen version so that will gives you the version number of the python which you installed in your machine so now we need to install a package called uh, virtual environment okay so run the command following so if you are using windows use pip if you are using mac use pip3 so pip3 install and virtual env basically pip is a command we is a command which helps us to install the packages from the python so pip install virtual env so hit the enter so that will shows that will install the virtual env in my case i already installed the virtual env environment that's the reason it's showing requirement already satisfied all right so now what we need to do is we need to create a virtual environment folder inside this folder so clear it i need to run the command called python so wherever I'm using Python 3, if you're using Windows, please run Python. Okay, so Python 3 hyphen M, which VE and V, virtual environment and give the name of your environment folder. In this case, I'm going to create an environment folder in the name called ENV. It's a short form for environment. Okay, so which VE and V, that is for virtual environment. Basically, we are accessing the virtual environment command by using VE and V and we are installing a separate virtual environment in the name called env okay 
once you hit enter so that will create a new folder called env inside the env we have the necessary bin files where you can have the activate and all the pip3 and python packages inside the bin if you are using windows instead of bin folder you can find a scripts folder all right and you have the libraries which is necessary for our setup tools and everything and inside the includes it doesn't have anything so far later it will come it will add an app inside here okay so this is how you need to install the virtual environment okay then so now we need to activate our virtual environment so activate our virtual environment you need to get inside the environment folder so cd env cd env enter and let me clear that clear and now over here if you want to activate it if you are using a mac machine follow the commands just like the way i used to follow here so source dot slash bin activate so that will activate the uh, environment which is inside our bin folder if you are using a windows you just need to write the command called dot slash scripts slash activate that's it hit enter so that will activate it so this is how it will shows once the activator you can see the environment name before your location Okay, before your command line you can see the environment name the for environment folder name and if you are using uh, windows instead of this command you need to run the command called dot slash dot slash scripts slash activate that's it that will activate your environment to deactivate our environment all you have to type deactivate that's it it's common for both windows and mac you just need to write hit deactivate and hit enter so that will deactivate our environment so let me activate my environment again and here we go so this is how you need to activate and deactivate your virtual environment okay then so let's install all the necessary packages which is needed for this project so let's install that so pip reinstall flask of course we are going to use the flask so use the package called flask and flask flask web gui so basically we are going to convert the website into a gui so we need to install this package web gui flask web gui that helps us to convert the website into a gui then we need to install pi installer so pi installer is a package which helps us to export our gui completely into an executable file that's why we need the pi installer folder and we need the firebase admin because we are using firebase our backend straight data storage so we need the firebase admin okay so the, these are all the necessary packages that you need to download and install so please press enter and download it and install it so it's downloading and it will be done in a matter of time so please wait patient until it gets done
and there we go so finally it successfully installed it took me three minutes to install this packages so let's move on okay then since it's successfully downloaded and installed now we need to export this packages as a complete requirements as a text file so we need to uh, do this for our latest later purposes okay so that's the best practice to do a python project also so all you have to do is to run the command called pip freeze so if we run the command pip freeze that will gives you the list of packages which is successfully installed over here so, so these are the packages which is successfully installed when it comes with the firebase and all the py installer packages and everything what I need to do is I need to instead of printing it in the console, I need to export it as a requirements.txt. So pip3 freeze. So before that, we need to come outside of the environment folder that should be in the root folder. So cd space double dot. So now I'm outside of my environment folder. So let me minimize it. So that will create the requirement.txt over here. So pip3 freeze freeze greater than symbol so freeze all these packages into the requirements dot txt so you can name whatever you want so i'm just going to give the requirements dot txt so press enter so that will create a requirement dot txt with a list of python packages which we needed look at that so this is the best practice to create a python project all right then so now let's create our main python application so all you have to do is to right click your root folder and create a new file called app.py so once you created this app.py and you can see that it's showing the python version what exact version you are using and it's showing it's installed in inside our virtual environment so please make sure that you are currently inside your virtual environment okay so here i need to run we need to import a certain packages so first package is going to be from the flask we are going to use the flask package i'm going to import the flask class flask and i'm going to use the render template method also okay so these are the necessary um in necessary methods that for the time being we need to import it then what i need to do is i'm going to create an application okay so app is equals use the flask class open it open it and we are going to use the underscore underscore name module okay so underscore underscore name that is the application of your package so the name of the application package okay we are going to use that magic keyword over that basically whatever it's starting with underscore underscore we used to say it is as a magic keyboard and you can read this over here what exactly that underscore underscore name it is okay so now all i have to, to say uh, we need to instruct the flask application what exact the folder of the templates it's going to be okay so what i'm going to say is i'm going to say the template folder it's going to be templates so i haven't created this folder so we need to create this folder in our root directory so right click new folder all templates that's the folder inside this folder only we are going to maintain all our html files and everything so that's why we are instructing our application as a template folder it's equals templates so save the changes and right after it what i need to do is i need to um create an api route so without route your application it's not going to work so it's not much as complicated to creating an API a route endpoint for in Python. It's really simple. All you have to use this app dot route. And I'm going to say the home route. If it is going to be, if it is the home route, app dot route is equal to home slash. That means basically home. So I need to call a function called define index. Open it. And inside this, I'm just going to say return render template render template and basically it's going to render the template called index.html index.html okay we haven't created the index.html inside this and you can see that 
because we mentioned it as our root folder as a template so it goes to the templates and inside the templates is trying to figure it out the index.html so still we created the route and we haven't accessed our main application so we need to run our main application to run it what you need to do is all you have to do is to if the underscore underscore name is equals to underscore underscore main so every python file has the package name called underscore underscore name, name that's the reason we are using this so if that name is equals to main then i need to run our application so app dot run and i'm going to enable the debug mode as true i need to enable the debug mode and here we go so this is the basic thing we need to do so it will try to run this application and it will figure it out this route over here and because that's a basic route that will uh, runs a basic local host route and it will render this index.html we haven't created this index.html so that's what we need to do now so go to the templates folder and right click it and create a new file over there called index.html okay so let me change my language mode to uh, html because it's using django template i need to use the html template so let me change the language mode to html and here we go and press shift that exclamatory symbol so that will build the html boilerplate code and here i'm going to say h1 or hi there see the changes and let's run the command called python three app dot py so hit enter so that will run a certain a local host s environment so if you click copy this or control click it i'm just copying it and i'm going to paste it over here press enter it's showing a requester's url was not found on the server why let's go to the app.py and uh ah, okay so it's my mistake so all you have to do here at this add symbol is highly important so that will indicate this is as a route i forget it my bad i'm sorry so now you can see it it's showing the debugger is active and it started debugging our application and if i refresh it here one more time now look at that it's rendering our html file so this is how you need to basically create a flask application all right then since our server is up and running you can see our server is running over here so all i need to do is to structure our folder okay so let me stop my server by pressing ctrl c in the terminal ctrl c so that will stop our server and then what we need to do is we need to create a new folder in our root directory called static so create a folder called static Inside the static, I'm going to create two different folders. One is for source and another one is for our output. So basically, we are going to compile our raw CSS file into an output files. Okay. So create a new folder. SRC, this is for our raw files. And inside the static folder, I'm going to create a new folder called this. This is for our output files. Inside the source, I'm going to create two more new folders called CSS. And another one is for JS. And inside the dist folder, I'm going to create a new folder called CSS. And one more folder called JS. And one more folder for images. In case if I need any image, I need to bring it inside here. And here we go. So we do have all the CSS and images and JS. So this is the project folder structure. It should be. So next, what we need to do is we need to configure our tailwind css so that's what we are going to do next all right then so before starting installing the tailwind css we need to make sure that we do have installed the node.js in our machine so if you have it installed the node.js in your machine so go ahead and search for node.js download node.js download so that will take you to their official website and from there you can download the node.js so you can choose the installer for windows or mac or linux whatever the platform you are using choose the file and download it and install it okay so once you download and install in your machine so we need to make sure the node.js is installed perfectly or not so to run that so run the command node hyphen hyphen version so that will gives you the version of the node which you install in your machine so since i already installed the node.js in my machine so it's returning the version of my node.js so 
once you install the node.js and you have confirmed it so we need to run the command to create and to initialize our node in this project so i'm just going to use the yarn package so basically yarn is the um is a package which overcomes all the disadvantage of npm okay if you feel comfortable you can use npm or if you want to use yarn run this command in your machine so npm install sorry npm install hyphen g hyphen g for global globally i need to access the yarn package so that's the reason i'm going to install the yarn so run this command so that will install the yarn in your machine so hit n and okay it's showing already exist so i already have the yarn in my machine so that's the reason it's showing that so i'm just going to say yarn and it so once you install the yarn so run this command yarn in it so that will initialize our package so here we go it's asking several questions to initialize your package so it's asking uh question name what is the package name it's going to be to do list exactly and version number the same and the description is going to be python uh, modern gui using flask and here we go press enter and enter and enter author name type your name enter 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 and here we go so it successfully created a package.json and you look at that so these are all the details which we entered so next what we need to do is we need to configure the tailwind css that's what we are going to do next all right then since our package.json is initiated next what we need to do is we need to install the tailwind css so go ahead and search for tailwind css and you can find the the very first official link that is the tailwindcss.com so click it that will take you to their website and click get started and they provided a nice documentation to install and configure the tailwind css so we already installed the node.js and initialized our project so you just need to copy this command and we need to paste it if you are using npm simply copy and paste it if you are using yarn copy it from here copy it and run the command called yarn add instead of npm install you need to run the command called yarn add and paste it so that will install the tailwind css in our project and look at that inside the developer dependencies we added our tailwind css and you can see the node modules is successfully created over there so then what we need to do is to run the next command we need to initialize the tailwind css to get our tailwind config.js so we don't have the tailwind config yet so run the command yarn tailwind in it so that will initialize and it will create our tailwind config.js so it's successfully created so inside this content folder i need to ensure that to the folder which needs to be keep tracked by the tailwind config so if you go and see here it's initially it's showing the source folder from the current directory but we are not supposed to copy this because we need to keep track of this static and the template folder so run exactly the same command what i written over here so what you need to do is you need to just give me a minute i'm just copying it and pasting it over here so just run this line in your content folder dot slash that means from the current directory of your tailwind that cs config.js dot slash go to the templates folder inside any folder that means that's a double slash even you can create a folder inside and you can keep the html file inside that folder too so we need to check that also inside any folder if you're having html file you need to configure them and it's the same way inside the static i do have the source inside that if i have a js in that also it should check okay in this case if you want to check the dist folder also you need to run and you need to check the dist folder also dist. anyway we are not going to use the js and we are not going to write the styles inside the js folder but this is the best way to configure the tailwind css if you are looking for all right so then what i need to do is i need to create an input.cs file and inside that i need to copy this file name so this is not necessary you need to follow the input.cs file but it's very sure whatever the file name you're using here you need to run use that exact file name in the command so copy this and go to your project folder and inside the static folder we already created the source and inside the source we already created the css and right click and create a new file all input i'm just going to use it the same thing press and control v save the changes 
then let's go back here and we need to run this command inside our terminal so this is the command is basically initializing our input.cs and exporting our output in our dist folder that's the reason we created a two different folder inside our static folder so all i have to do is to copy this command and i'm going to update it in my terminal so let me clear the terminal paste it over here so what i need to do is move it instead of npx i'm going to use the yarn because we are using yarn if you're using yarn use the yarn alone don't mix both the commands inside okay hyphen i i need to go to the static folder first from the root directory it should go to the static go to the static folder slash you can access the source folder inside the source folder you need to go to the css folder slash then you can find the input.css and just like the same way i need to go to the static folder slash static go to the dist folder and inside the dist folder you can find the css folder and inside the css folder you need to export the output.css in this case instead of output.css i'm going to say styles.css and this command should run use the hyphen hyphen watch because this should constantly watch for the changes in our input.css then it can export the output to our styles.css so once you press enter so that will start listening and you can see it's showing no utility classes are detected that's fine because we haven't used any utility classes so far and look at that it's done in 78 milliseconds and if you go and have a look at it inside the dist inside the css and there we go you have the styles.css these are all the classes which is generated from our input.css files okay so this command should not be closed and it should constantly run but every single time i can't run the same command so i need to figure out a way to configure this command so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop it and i'm going to copy this command to make this command as simple i'm going to write a going to create a script inside our package.json so go here so inside the package.json what you need to do is i need to start this command whenever I'm calling a script in our package so that's the reason so here I'm going to say scripts call the scripts create a scripts object inside the scripts object what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a command called watch whenever I'm calling this command called watch you need to run this specific command yawn tailwind css the exact command watch be written in the tailwind uh, in our terminal so copy this and go to your terminal clear the screen and here now I need to run yawn watch so that will trigger that command and it will execute and it will constantly watch it so you don't need to write the a very big command every single time just to add it in your scripts file and that will you can use the yarn that script name that will trigger that very big command so this is how you need to configure your tailwind css in your python project all right then since we successfully configured the tailwind config then what we need to do is we need to start writing the tailwind css inside our html file so go back to the extension over here and search for tailwind css intelligence so that will help you to write the tailwind css utility classes easily by and it provides you the suggestions when you're writing the css in your html file so open up your html file and let me close this and here I'm just going to say for the time being I need to make sure whether everything is working fine or not so I'm just going to say text 3xl that's the font size and then text blue color I'm going to use blue 500 and I'm going to say font semi bold all right so save the changes and you can see that when you're whenever you're saving your changes make sure that your the command which we added in our package scripts that should up and running so it's running but my server is not running now so i need to turn on my server so click new terminal and run my server over here so python 3 app.py so hit enter so now my server is running over here so let me copy it and let me update this url there we go but our tailwind is not working because we haven't added our output.css which we generated in our dist folder so I need to use that output over here. So what I'm going to say is I'm just going to add that over here just by after this, after these, I'm just going to say link. Okay, so link. So instead of using this link, what I'm going to say so instead of directly using this dot slash something like that, you need to use the URL for method, which is provided by the Python. 
okay so what i need to do is i'm just going to change this language mode to django template so django template all right so then i'm just going to say open the arrow mark curly braces two time inside this curly braces i'm just going to say url underscore for that's the method we are going to use url underscore for inside this i'm going to say use the static folder static static folder then from the static folder access this file name file name equals what is that file name give that file name location so inside the static folder i do have a folder name called dist go to the dist folder go to the css folder and access the output uh, output or uh, styles.css styles.css access that file so this url method will go to the static and it will go to and access this file name exactly in this location so let me change this to again language mode to html back so save the changes okay now it's changed and it's successfully loaded let me refresh it and now we can see that our tailwind is successfully up and running fine okay so this is how you need to add the link tag and you can start writing your css classes and everything okay so let me go to my input.css file now so we need to come we need to add some extra styles and we need to change the body font styles and everything so let me go to the input.css and i'm going to say i'm going to import my font so use the google fonts extension and search for poppins i'm going to use the uh, font called poppins i'm going to add it as my uh, font and i need to say star that means basically all the element use the margin as zero padding as zero and we are using the box sizing model which helps us to arrange the each and every element inside the uh this box it will be easy so box size model then body tag is open the body tag so body tag it's going to use the width as 100 sorry width as 100 bw okay but it's going to basically it's going to use the width as 100 okay even you can set the minimum height if you need i'm just going to set the minimum height as 100 vh 100 vh then i'm going to say display as a flex display as a flex and the flex direction as it's going to be column column direction and uh, i'm going to align everything in vertically and as well as in the horizontally in the center location so align items in the center and justify the content in the center and i'm going to say the background color for my uh, page is going to be hash 515151 save the changes and go and refresh it and here we go so my background color is changed and my entire content is in the center of the screen so this is what we need so let me bring this to my same screen and i can arrange it side by side so that we can see the preview instantly let me keep this one in this side and let me bring it over here a little bit like this and i'll bring it over here all right so let me minimize this terminal cool so now we can see the side by side preview instantly so now we done with our main body tag so let's go ahead and start creating our header section okay so that's what we are going to do now all right then since our tailwind is up and running perfectly and we created this nice background so what i need to do is i need to change this entire layout structure of my main page so actually initially it's rendering the index.html okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep this index.html as my main layout and i'm going to update the layout uh, layer block by block okay because in a real time project you might have we might work with a very big number of very number very big number of pages so what i need to do is i need to keep a layout and then i just need to update a single part in that layout okay so what exactly i'm saying is so we are going to create a blocks and that blocks going to update dynamically so instead of that uh, writing the entire html page separately i'm going to keep this index as a main layout and in that page we are going to render a separate html file inside that blocks okay so change this language mode to django html file instead of normal html file and then 
instead of this title i'm going to create a block over here so block and that block name is going to be head block okay and inside this h1 tag instead of this h1 tag let me delete this h1 tag and i'm going to create a block and that block name is going to be body block okay so inside this places everything will be rendered from a different html file so this is the main html layout so let me create one more file over here and i'm going to say it as home.html okay so i'm going to include this text i'm going to extend this index.layer that means the basic layout to our home layout so the first line should be extends index dot html so index.html will be extended inside your home.html and i'm going to create a comment line and i'm going to keep the head block over here i'm going to use the head block over here so let me bring my head block inside so block block head block and inside the head block i'm going to bring the comment line sorry the title title so inside this title i'm just going to say to do list home and in now i need to bring the body block so block once again and the block name is going to be body so make sure this block name is exactly matching your block which you created in your index.html then here i'm just going to say the h1 tag h1 i new body block something like that and i need to close the h1 element okay so now what we need to do is let's save the changes if everything is working fine it should display this title over here and it should display this hi there hi new body block something over here so let me refresh it but currently nothing is rendering inside so if i go to the inspect elements and you can see the body tag is completely empty it's because it's render it's rendering the index.html so in inside the index.html nothing is there plain body blocks only okay what i need to do is instead of rendering this in the index.html we need to render the home.html as our main file so let me go here and render the home.html save the file so why i'm giving the home.html instead of index.html because since the index is already extended in our home page so we don't need to render the index separately so index will be automatically rendered inside your home so refresh it now you can see that hi new body block is there and you can see the title is updated perfectly so this is how you need to create a custom layout for your entire html page so now whenever i'm updating so since whenever i'm creating a new html page all i need to write this body tag so they will be re-rendered inside your index or html just in the place of their blocks okay just like ajax okay so next what we need to do we need to customize this entire layer that's what we are going to do next all right so now what i need to do is i need to go and create this header over here so let me go to our index.html because header is going to fixed for every single page i'm not going to re render it every single time so let me go to my index.html and change the language mode to html to write the html easily so change the language mode to html and then over here i'm just going to say header and this header is going to use the class name as I'm going to say width for use the hundred percentage width and the flex everything is going to be and the items should be in the center and the shadow I'm going to use MD okay in the mobile devices padding X that means left and right it's going to be eight eight but once the, from the medium device it should use the padding as PX 32 and the py that means top and bottom it's going to be py the top and bottom it's going to be 2 and from the medium device the py it's going to be 8 all right so then what i need to do is i'm just going to save the changes and i'm going to refresh it and you can see that we do have a header block over here but it's in the center 
okay so maybe what you can do is you can keep it fixed in the top location and you can put it in the top of the page okay and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say um paragraph tag inside this paragraph tag and i'm going to say class i'm going to keep it as text white color text to white and text 3 excel and font semi bold and i'm going to say it's as a to do list to do list save the changes so that will bring the to do list over here look at that we do have the to do list over there all right so now our header block is successfully done so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a one more division called main so that is going to be the main body and i'm going to give a class name for it and that is going to use the width as hundred percentage and everything is going to be flex and flex color and exactly the same design what i created for the header copy it and paste it here so save the changes and inside this main block only our entire body block should be rendered so i'm going to bring it inside the body block i'm going to save the changes save it save the changes and let's re-render it here we go so now we have everything inside our body black now all right so now what i need to do is i'm just going back to my um home.html inside the home.html instead of that uh, the high there and all those things i'm just going to customize it a little bit so let me press enter and change the language mode to normal html html save the changes and inside here we are going to render that form first i'm going to bring this form over here i'm going to bring this form okay so that's what we are going to do now all right then so let's uh we already changed the layout mode let's sorry the language mode language mode then type the division and this division is going to be have a class called class okay i'm going to use it as a width full width it should use the width and flex and everything should be flex in column direction and i'm going to arrange it in the center and justify center justify oops sorry justify it center and inside this division i'm going to create a form form action is not going to happen anything so i don't need to keep any actions at all but i'm going to change the method as post method okay and i'm going to give an id as add task add underscore task inside this form what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the input fields and the button so before that i need to make sure this form is perfectly customized so class i'm just going to say the class name is just a moment all right so the class name what we are going to use it for let me enable the word wrap so view word wrap okay so here so flex item center and justify the elements everything in the center use the width complete width of the parent box okay that should be in the small screen but in the medium screen it should use only 340 okay it should use the width as 340 pixels so we need to create a custom tailwind configuration so in so what i need to do is i need to extend all my custom styles and everything inside the extend block so i don't want to waste my time in the writing all the custom styles in that i'm just going to copy it and then paste it so let me copy it and let me paste it inside the extend box there's nothing but i just created a custom width and height over here which i needed a lot in the websites so so 115 width 150 means 150 pixels so basically we are creating a width class with 150 and for height certain numbers and the minimum width with a certain numbers screens you can target the different screen sizes over here so i created all the screen sizes and these are the colors i'm just going to use it for my cards which i'm using inside right now okay so i just drop this in the description below so that you can copy and paste it your styles over there so save the changes <laughs> so let me go back to the um home html so let me go back to the home html and then start writing the styles over there <coughs> sorry so here now what i need to do is instead of um 
I'm saying width 340 pixels so that you can see the 340 styles which we added in our custom tail in CSS. All right. So then what we need to do is I'm just going to say BG card. Okay. PG card and then padding. I'm just adding two and from medium device add the padding as four and I'm going to say rounded empty shadow empty. These are the styles I need to add for my form. So let me refresh it and let's see what we got. And look at that. This is the one we got over here. And since it's added over there like that, what you need to do is we just need to add some um, something inside this form that is our input element. So I'm just going to add the input tag input. I'm just going to say input the type is going to be the text only. And the name of that input element is going to be to do and then id of the name is going to be to do okay so then what we can do is um we can keep it as to do input that's a perfect name we can use input to do input all right so then what i need to do placeholder placeholder is going to be type here All right, so let's save the changes and refresh it. Now we have that option over there. Then I need to bring a button, so button, and the type of the button is going to be, type is going to be summit, because once I click this, this form needs to be submitted. Summit, and then I'm just going to say add, save it, and control R. And look at that, we have the button over there, and we have the text box over here. But it's not looking nice, so we need to make some customizations over here. So I'm just going to add, class name for this class um class what we can do is width full width is going to be full and whatever the width is available take it and height whatever the height it's available take it outline i don't need any outline and border i don't need any border and bg i'm just going to set it as a transparent background and then text i'm just going to say black color and then placeholder color is going to be text gray 500 okay so text gray it's going to be 500 save the changes and now let me see how it's looking look at that so we have the text box which is nicely done over there all right so what i can do is i can simply go and customize it a little bit more i can add a font size over here so let's say text uh lg font semi bold save the changes and refresh it and type it that looks much better save it and now i need to customize this button over here so class name is going to be um px it's going to be three padding left and right and py it's going to be one we don't need the outline so remove the outline none and we don't need the border so remove the border and we need to keep the text in a white color inside the button so white and the text size i'm just going to keep base size it's like 16 pixels or 14 pixels something okay and i'm going to keep the font as semi bold and in then the button size should be rounded then i'm going to use the bg emerald 400 as the background color save the changes and refresh it look at that but currently it's showing it's reloading so method is not allowed so no problem when i click it it's reloading it okay so when i click that it's simply showing like that right okay that there is no action like a, a special kind of action over there so when i click it like it should have some um change in their active state so that's the reason okay so let me mm, let me do something so instead of this as a form okay let me cut it okay cut it i'm just want to show you instead of this form let me change this to division what exactly i want to say here is save this and refresh it and now when i click it see the button is nothing is happening so what i need to do is I need to change the active state of the button if the button is active what i need to do is i just going to change the scale to 75 that means 75 percentage and transition all 
transition all duration is going to be 200 ease in save the changes and refresh it now when i click it you can see we have the nice clickable event over there okay that's we need to show it on the uh, click up whenever you are clicking it it should happen in that way so instead of now this division i'm just going to change it back to the form itself okay and i'm going to change this also as a form itself oops not there make it very carefully inside division form inside division form there we go yes refresh the changes okay now when you click it it should reload and it should go there no problem okay we can customize it later where it should be reloaded and where it should be rendered and all those things so now the successfully we created this the nice text section nice option over here so when it's a big screen this is how it looks when it's small screen this is how it looks perfect it's completely responsive then what i need to do we need to create the next part of our home division that is this nice button over here so because if it is not running so if there is nothing okay so i think it stopped over there mm. just a minute let me bring it over here that screen there we go so we have that application over here it's showing that option if i close it so that will be deleted and we need to design this now so that's what we are going to do next all right then so we finish this the input section so let's go ahead and create this that task section over here so what i need to do is after this form over here enter after this form so first what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that section, that uh, division. So first let's create the division. Inside this division, that class name is going to be class. It's going to be width as full. And in the medium devices, it should be 656. It should be only 656. Width as 656 okay and the margin top from the margin you should it should take some space that's the reason and the padding it's going to be two and from the medium device padding it's going to be four p4 and rounded it's going to be empty and border color is going to be the same border color as the card say the changes and refresh the screen save it refresh it let me check inspect and we do have that division inside that division we have that border also but why the border is not displaying oh, okay border size we haven't designed defined it border two or something say the changes refresh it and here we go now we have can see that border over here it's looking perfect now okay so now inside this we need to create the uh, that um, the list items and then all those things so that's what we need to do next now what i need to do is let me create the if there is task if the task list is completely empty we need to display this nice image over here so which you can download it from um let's go to the andro website if you search for andro so let me expand it if you search for andro andro and go to browse now and if you search over there as uh not found or something you can find that the SVG diagram over here so click here and download that SVG and bring it inside your project so let me close it and let me bring it into my project now so I'll be downloaded and renamed it oh so where it is there we go let me bring it and paste it inside my images folder over here I click paste it here we go 
okay i already renamed it so inside this after this svg option you can find a default width and height remove the default width and height object okay otherwise it will always fix it to that size remove that default width and height all right so then let's go back to the home.html so here this is the place now what we need to do is we need to create a division inside here okay so if that is the division if that is not what we need to do so that's what we are going to do okay so what i'm going to do is inside here i'm going to create a two more division this is for division uh, which is going to render the list and this is for the division if that list is empty what we want to render and basically i'm going to check this uh, if the list is empty or not we need to write the python blocks inside here so that will do it later for the time being i'm just going to write it without any conditions here so i'm just going to say class width i'm going to say it as full and i'm just going to say as item center i'm going to say it as a flex and then justify the content in the center and i'm going to keep everything in the column direction inside this i'm just first i'm going to bring the class name so a text is going to be 2xl 2xl then the text color is going to be text gray 200 200 and font semi bold and everything should be capitalized and the tracking space that means the line space should be between the characters should be wider and the margin bottom it should be three okay so i'm just going to say here no tasks say the changes and let's refresh it that's how it's looked so right after this paragraph i need to bring that image so image and basically this image is coming from our source directory so we need to use the source like this so let me copy it from here copy it paste it and inside instead of this file name list folder i'm going to use the img folder instead of styles.css i'm just going to say the file name from our right click rename control a and control c or command a command c paste it here all right and i'm going to say the class name of it the width i'm going to fix it with is 225 pixels save the changes and refresh it look at that so our image is successfully loaded over here okay so we successfully finished the empty task then what we need to do we need to customize our task list so that's what we are going to do next all right then so since we successfully compiled and sorry successfully customized the empty task division next what we need to do we need to bring the task list so how the ui of the task list is going to be so let me break it this division and inside this division what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say the exact same way like where this is going to be full and padding it's going to be two in the normal and then the px only in the px the padding padding in all the sides too but only in the left and right it's going to be four so rounded it's going to be md medium and i need to have the shadow empty so shadow empty all right so the bg card is going to be we already defined the color inside our tailwind config you can see i already defined the colors over here small card i'm going to use that color code over here small card and i'm going to say flex and item center okay and justify the items in the center all right so let me enable the word trap right and for this this i'm going to say margin bottom as to save the changes and refresh it now you can see we have this division over here so just like the same way if i have one more division like one more task list you can see like this inside this we need to display the task name and the delete button that's what so that's the reason we added the margin bottom over here so let me delete it let it okay now inside this division i'm going to bring the name and the icon of that delete icon so name is going to be class oops not that here class i'm just going to say text gray color save the changes text 
Oh, come on. Text gray, 200. 200. Then text size is going to be text Excel. Then font semi bold. Then I'm just going to type the text as high. Refresh it. Look at that. So what I need to do is I just need to bring one more division that is going to be the icon. So we need to bring the icon. So that's the reason I'm going to use the box icon. So open your browser and search for the box icons. So box icons search for box icons. That's the first website. And there you can see the lots of icons which we needed, but we need to get their CDN link. So click the GitHub that will take you to their official GitHub and scroll down and you can find this CDN link from here. So copy the CDN link and go to your index. Where is our? Okay, go to the index. Where is the index.html? Right after here, paste it. Save the changes and now we can use the box as uh, icons inside so i'm just going to search for the trash bin so i'm just going to use this copy it go to the font click it and copy it and now where is that um yeah right after here i'm just going to paste it save the changes and now i don't need this anymore let me close this and now if I refresh it and you can see we do have this option over here but it's very close to each other so instead of using the justify center I can use it as justify between save the changes and now they will be arranged like this look at that so still I need to add some customizations for this icon so over here what I'm going to say is like um, we can simply say it as an Mm, mm, mm. let's say as text to excel let's increase the font size and text red 400 400 save changes look at that that's looking good so then what i need to do i need to exact same thing what i did for the the button so i'm just going to copy this active state from here copy it and i'm going to paste it mm, mm, mm. where is that over here paste it say the changes refresh it now when i click this look at that it's reducing the size and it's feeling like a button over there then i need to bring a cursor so inside this list i'm just going to say it as a cursor as a pointer say the changes now when you move inside this division it looks like a cursor look at that perfect that's perfect now all i have to do is to just copy this divisions and if i paste it few more times that looks like this like this but in this division is going to be dynamically rendered by our data which is coming from our firebase okay so i'm just going to delete it save the changes and refresh it so so far we successfully created the two necessary divisions which is needed for our project okay so now let's go ahead and create the remaining section all right then since we successfully created the uh, designs over here so we need to and we need to create the firebase project too and we need to start working on our backend now so click this new tab and create go to the firebase.google.com so firebase.google.com so that will take you to their dashboard so click here to go to console have we go now i need to create a new project add new project and i'm going to name it as python flask so click continue and i don't need any google analytics for this project create a project so this might take a while so sit tight until it's get done otherwise in the meanwhile go and verify your uh requirements list whether you already done installing the python sorry the firebase admin okay i do remember that i we successfully already installed the firebase admin so now the project is initiated so click continue and here first what we need to do we need to create a web app so click the web and give a name for your web app so i'm just going to give a name for it as the same name or my file name so python flask so click register app so that will create the all the necessary keys the api keys and all those things Alright, so web app is initiated. So let's close this. 
and let's go ahead and create the firestore database over here so click the firestore database create database over here so i'm just going to use the test mode next and click enable if you want to change the location you can choose the nearby location for from your current location otherwise leave it as it is as a us central so this might take a while like a minute or sometimes more than a minute so please wait until it successfully initialize your security rules and everything once it's done it successfully create the files for collections all right so now it's initiated and it's navigated to my firestore collection db location look at that so we so far everything is empty inside here so now what i need to do i need to click this cog icon over here and click the project settings so that will takes me to my main project settings where i can have a look of my complete the information about my project and now i need to navigate to my service accounts click the service accounts and that will takes us to the firebase admin sdk and you can have your firebase admin initializations admin privileges over here so we need to generate a new private key click and generate a new private key so that will generate the new private key and i need to bring it inside our visual studio code so let me bring it to our visual studio code and i'll drop it in my root directory here we go so let me rename this to as service account key copy it and let me paste it as rename it as service account key press enter all right so this is the thing which we needed so let me close it okay so let me go back to our app.py app.py so let me keep this one in a separate screen so let me keep it over here cool so now what I need to do is over here, I need to bring the, so we successfully initialized the Firebase and we configured it everything and we exported our service account key.json file. Now all we have to do is to configure this service account with our app.py. That means our Flask app. That's what we are going to do. Okay, then since we successfully configured the Firebase and we exported our service account key.json, so what we need to do is we need to keep the service account key.json in a secured way. So that's the reason I'm going to create a config file to configure all our Firebase regarding clients and everything, and we can render it inside our Flask app. So let's create a new app inside. Let me collapse this. So collapse the template too. And here I'm going to create a new file in the root called the config.py config.py paste it sorry enter it so what i need to do is i need to uh where is that so we need to this is by this way we need to configure our credentials to our app so i need to import these two packages and i need to use this credentials to configure our service access key service account key it's all what I need to do is let me go here and let me copy and paste these two files. Let's copy it and paste it. Then I need to go back. I need to copy these two and I need to paste it over here. So that is rendering from my dot slash. Actually, this is not the proper way to render your service account key.json. <clears throat> So we need to use, we need to extract the base uh, directory folder, complete location. Then we need to append this file name with our base directory because that's the proper way. So because sometimes user install this exe executable software in their C drive or D drive, it might be different. So you need to configure it perfectly. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say from OS package, import the path, import the path uh import spell it wrong import the path we are going to import this path okay <clears throat> so using this path i'm going to get the base directory so let's say base dir that's a variable we are creating so using the path object path dot absolute path path dot directory name so we are going to get the directory name dot dir name okay of the file the location of the current file okay so that will gives the directory name of the current file that's the reason we are using underscore underscore file name okay then i'm going to create service account service account name 
that means the file name service account file name okay so and i'm going to append the path dot join the path which i already have that is the base directory location along with that add my service account json so i need to copy this and i need to paste it over here this will be appended with our service account and here i need to supply my service account name which we extracted so that will successfully configure it okay and i need to say it as an app okay so app is equals firebase admin initialize that credentials so now we do have all the necessary things inside our config now i need to load this config inside our app.py so to do that what you need to do is so right after your flask application where the place where we are rendering it app.py over there so all i have to do is to bring my config and i need to load the config so what i do need to do is app dot config we have a config from python file because we are loading the configuration from the python file then supply that python file name config dot py as i told you whenever you are inserting a file directly here you need to extract it its base path then you need to use it so i'm just going to copy this copy it and i'm going to paste it over here and i'm going to bring the os path copy it and i'm going to import it right after here and file name instead of this is going to be config and instead of config.json i'm just going to say config.py make sure the file name is perfect config.py and instead of this config.py here i'm just going to say config like that so this is the way you need to configure your file external file inside so now we successfully configured our all the settings which we necessarily used for our firebase so next what we need to do we need to start writing our code to add the data to the list so let's go ahead and do that now okay then since we successfully configured our config.py file next what we need to do is we need to add the data into our firebase list okay so before moving into adding what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, fetch the data we need to fetch the data and we need to upload the data over here okay so currently there is no list in our firebase okay if i go to the firestore database inside the firestore database it's completely empty so let's go ahead and finish the first task itself adding a task then we can come back and fetch the details from there all right so let's go ahead and create the add task elements so what i need to do is since we successfully loaded our firebase config so what i need to do we all right so we loaded it here this is the place the firebase config is loaded app.config is loaded so right after here i'm going to load the database so db is equals firebase dot client firebase dot client so it shows an error for the firebase of course we need to bring the um not firebase so this is going to be firestore firestore dot client so i need to import that also so from firebase admin import firestore so now that error will be gone so now we do have the db client which is needed for our file so let's go ahead and change this and we are going to create a new route over here so let's create a new route at app dot route i'm going to uh, that route name is going to add to list add to list and this route is going to take a methods so you need to give the exact method what method is going to take i'm going to use the both post method and get method so post and as well as the get i'm going to get this both two different methods then i'm going to create a method name add to list so here if the request so we need to get the request so we need to render that request also so right after here i'm just going to say um we are going to use the two more packages called request and we are going to render 
sorry not render we are going to redirect it to someone else some page so redirect these are the methods we need to use now and inside here if the request dot method is equals to post method if it is that then what i need to do is i need to get the element from the list so what i'm going to say to do equals request dot from request dot form dot get the to do okay save the changes so now what i need to do is from the front end i need to send the data to my back end okay so i can directly send it from here where is that in the index.html so once i click send so this home form will be submitted this form will be submitted where is it where is that form okay here is that form this form gets submitted and it will send the data to the backend it will not like it will it will send the data to the url so through the url we need to access that so what i need to do is i need to use the jquery to trigger that action so now let's go ahead and add the jquery so okay so i will explain why we need the jquery to send the data and all those things okay so first next what we need to do we need to install the jquery we need to use the jquery cdn so let's go ahead and add the jquery now so since we successfully created the route for it let me close this unnecessary files okay so since we successfully created the route now we need to add the jquery so go to and open your browser and search for jquery cdn search for the content delivery network you can find the first link click it and click the minified and you can see the script tag copy the script and then go to your index.html index.html and right after the main at the bottom of this add that script tag so that script tag will be gets added over here look at that just like this now the jquery file is successfully loaded so now what we need to do is inside the index so now i need to make sure whenever the form it gets submitted that means this form this is the form it's going to get submitted i need to use the ajax to send the data to that specific route which we successfully created over here all right so let's go to my index.html so let me change the language mode to normal html save the changes and right after here i'm just going to create a one more script tag script okay inside this script only we are going to add that ajax line so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the id which i created for this form copy this and here i'm just going to say dollar document access the document okay from the document on okay on if the submit event is triggered if the event name is submit if that event is triggered through any form not any form to this specific id if the submit event is triggered from this form then i need to call a callback function i'm going to use an arrow 6 function and inside that arrow 6 function we are passing an event okay and then i'm just going to say i'm going to use the ajax dollar dot ajax ajax and i'm going to create an the parameters inside it and inside that parameter the first one is going to be the type what type it is type is going to be type is nothing but your uh, method type is going to be the post method and the url it's going to be what is the exact url so you need to supply the url of your route this is that url copy this url paste it then comma and what is the data you're going to supply the data i'm going to supply into it is an object and that object name is going to be to do because we are using that name over here that's the name i'm going to use send it over here to do and this is going to carry on the value of dollar supply the id name you need to fetch the value from your input this is the input take the value from this id and supply that value so here i need to say hash take the value hash 
after this bracket type dot val use the val method to get the value okay so that will collect the value from there then once it's successfully everything is done inside here once everything is successfully done comma success on success success that means basically ajax once the ajax is triggered and everything is done perfectly this it will returns the success object success success on before on after you have different events over here on before and on after so uh we have the different events over there in this case i'm going to use the success object on successfully insertion so what i'm going to do is i'm going to call a method i'm going to call a callback method A callback method open it and inside this method I'm just going to say to do I'm going to set that value so to do is going to be um, copy this value and I'm going to say this value was an empty save the changes this is what we are going to do now so once the document is loaded i'm going to call an on event on this event is triggered from where from the add task form that means this form we are calling a callback function and i'm triggering the ajax inside the ajax i'm setting the method as post and i'm calling the url and i'm sending the data by fetching the value from this particular id and assigning it to two and i'm sending it through a data object on success once it successfully uh, sent it to the backend and everything has happened successfully and it will trigger this success object and it will trigger this custom function over here then i'm setting the value back of this field as an empty field so this is what exactly this is happening over here now what i need to do is we need to make sure whether everything is working fine or not so right after here i'm just going to say print to do say the changes and let's open the terminal so far everything is fine over here no errors over here so let me refresh it and that's also fine and let me type something here something and hit add and we are getting an error mm. we are getting an error why 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 Mm, are we missing something everything is fine post it's sending an http post method only and inside that route um let me return over here return redirect to the home route itself save the changes let's go back here and refresh it and let me send it something still 405 method not allowed why it's returning method not allowed why we are making mistakes so we are making mistakes somewhere go to the form form mm. form method is as post only type we mentioned it as type submit that's fine no issues in that so when I click submit it should load this index over here that's the form name what is the form add underscore task that's the thing which we used but why it's not taking that we use the id so in the index.html oh my goodness so you need to supply the hashtag over here I missed that hashtag save the changes refresh it and now supply the and hit send still the same 
um, it's now you can see that it's sending it to the add to list it's sending it to there it's coming over here but something is not running fine methods we define the methods Mm. Add list everything we defined it properly. We send the method. What's wrong with this then? Let me try something else over here for the time being. Let's say print hi. And let's return it redirect to home directory itself save the changes oh goodness my mistake so the problem is it's returning the it's redirecting it to home directory you can see the text is printed you can see here the text which we sent it it's printed successfully and it's redirecting that URL to where to the home directory it's redirecting the url to the home but it's showing 405 because the method is not enabled in that route we haven't enabled that method that's the mistake so we need to enable the methods equals to uh, the same as post and as well as the get method all right so now it should work fine let's refresh it and let's send the hi there again at the send option look at that so it successfully sent that data to our front end and it's uh, that post method is triggered and it's sending the post method again to the the slash so because we redirected it over here that's the reason it's working okay and you can see that once i hit send it it's redirected and you can see currently it's not shown that the data is not displaying over there so, so we in the back end we are successfully getting the data now we need to send this data to the firebase that's what we are going to do next all right then since we successfully received the data in the back end so let's we don't need to print it anymore so what we need to do is we need to send this data to the firebase so right after here i need to get the unique id we need to create a unique id for each and every task so that i can insert the data into my firebase to get the unique id i'm going to use the time frame when that exact button is clicked i'm going to get that time frame so to get the time frame i need two different packages one is calendar and another one is going to be the time so i'm going to import the calendar import calendar and import time these two packages are default packages so you don't need to install anything else okay so i'm going to generate the id over here so id is equals str i need to convert those id it will comes as a time so we need to convert it as a string then we need to supply that to the firebase so here i'm going to get the from the calendar using the calendar i'm going to get the time gm then and then i'm just going to use the time to get the time so gm time that method will return the time in the time string like this for instance 1678 some something like a random number that will be always a unique number because that is a time frame so it will be always unique so i'm going to get the doc reference doc reference equals to uh we need to send the database so to understand the firebase data so what you can do is you can click go to their docs open their official documentation and search for firestore firestore search for it and there you can see add data to firestore so it's taking more than a while so click cloud firestore and there you can see the get started how to get started we already did all those things and if you click the python you can see how to install the firebase admin we did that and how to configure the firebase sdk and everything we already did that and what we need to do we create the facebook firestore collect client we already did that and now what we need to do we need to add the data to the firestore collection so you need to supply the collections and the document name and you need to set the data this is how you need to add the data to the firestore so all i have to do is to go here and i need to use the db db dot 
collection so i need to say db dot collection db dot collection the collection name is going to be task list inside that task list i'm going to say dot document i'm going to send that id so document is going to be the formatted string and i'm going to send the id over here id and i'm going to set the data so dot set that's the method we are going to use and dot set and inside this i'm going to supply the data object first one is going to be id id colon the id object second one is going to be my data object and then i'm going to supply the to do data which we have in our hand save the changes so this is the complete list db dot collection that is the firebase db which we have and we are creating a collection so let's make sure copy this and then paste it here collection that's the collection name is going to be the task list and the document so make sure it copy it and paste it and i'm going to set the document id that's a unique id which we generated then i'm going to set the data and i'm going to use the data over here so this will send the this will insert the data so we don't need this object if you need this object back so that will returns a promise like return date and time if you need it you can add it that otherwise you can simply insert you don't need that object so let me make sure whether everything is working fine or not so let me refresh it continue and here i'm just going to something added that's the data i'm going to pass it hit add data is added in the console is it showing any issue or anything it is not showing any error at all because it successfully passed and let me go back to my firebase now go to the firestore database let me refresh this page and here we go the task list is created and the new data is successfully added something added and you can see we successfully added into our database so let me insert one more thing so here task page created and initialized something like that so click add so it successfully passed to backend and here let me refresh it and okay look at that so we got the data look at that we got the data over here cool right so we successfully in a, the task page created and initialized so data is now successfully added into our firebase next what we need to do we need to bring those data and we need to display it in our application that's what we are going to do next all right then since we successfully added the data to our backend now what we need to do we need to retrieve the data and we need to display it in our front end so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use this index over here in before rendering this home.html file i need to fetch the data from my firestore so i'm going to use it i'm going to fetch the data from the firestore so i'm going to get the reference so docs equals so to get the data you can go through their official documentation if you go to their official documentation and click the read data option and there we go they will give you how to read a record from the firestore you can use the stream object or you can use the get object itself see Okay, they mentioned you can also use the get method to retrieve the entire collection you can use either stream or you can use the get method okay so i'm going here and i'm going to get that value so db dot collection collection i'm just going to copy this from here copy from here perfectly oops not that copy it and paste it collection in this case instead of document i'm just going to delete it I don't need it because i need to order it so if you go in the left side you can see the usage um read data uh, inside the read data you can find the option called order and limit data how to order the record in an order ascending or descending order so you can supply the order by supply the name and you can use this option how you want to arrange it in a descending or ascending how you want to arrange it so in that case i'm just going to say db dot collection i'm going to order it by copy this and i'm going to paste it over here instead of this 
and over here we need to add dot and id i'm going to order the record by using id and the direction using firestore query in the descending order i'm going to order it and i'm going to get the data so i'm going to use dot get method dot get so that will get the data and put it into our docs so then what i need to do i'm going to create a data as an empty array so i'm going to use the for so for doc in docs we need to extract one by one doc and put it into our dot so data dot append doc dot to underscore dictionary we are converting that object into a dictionary so you can see they are converting that object into a dictionary where is that get data once click that and here we go they are using two dict option to print that data so we need to convert the data into two dict by using this method to dict so that will be pushed into our array now i need to push this array to my home.html i need to send this array to my home.html so that i can uh, use this data in the front end so i'm sending the data as in the object called tasks equals i'm going to send the data object which we have in our hand so this will use this we need to check this object in the we need to get this object in the front end and we need to render in our front end so that's what we are going to do next so before doing that we need to make sure whether everything is working fine or not so let's check whether we are getting the data or not so print data save the changes Control j and let's refresh it it's refreshing and look at that we are getting the data over here see we are getting the data now we are passing this data to the front end we need to use this data in the front end so that's what we are going to do next all right then since we have our data in our hand now we need to use it in the front end so let's go to our home.html and let me change the language mode to the django html all right so now what i need to do is i need to write an if condition if that is data i need to render it if not i need to display this so what i'm going to do is um the divisions which we created over here these are the two divisions right here i need to write an if condition so enter enter so here i'm just going to write an if if else if else here i'm going to check the option in the front end through the back end i'm sending the data in an object called task i need to check that over here if the task if we do have the task okay if we do have a task we need to display it okay otherwise if we do have a task inside here what do you want to do if we do have a task i need to print this okay i need to get this element and i need to print it if we all know that if we do have a task we might have a multiple objects inside like more than one object so i need to use the for loop block also so for for task in tasks because that's the object we are getting for tasks in task enter and inside here i need to bring that html code if not i need to bring this division i'll copy this division that's it and then paste it inside the else block save the changes look at that like this so if that is a task we are starting the for loop and we are pasting for each and every task we are printing it over here otherwise we are simply printing this so now let me refresh it so that should refresh the high two times look at that it's refreshing the high two times now so it's working perfect as it's supposed to be it's not giving the list of that uh, images over here so the front end is working fine now instead of high what i'm going to do is i'm going to display my task dot what is that object we inserted data we need to display the object name called data save the changes and now refresh it and look at that so we have the task the newly created task at the top because we ordered it in a descending order so that's the reason we are getting in the top 
and we successfully integrate the data in our front end now all i need to do is to make sure whether the new data is working fine or let me add one more data over here so adding new task to list hit add so it's added and look at that it's displayed over here so everything is working as it's supposed to be now only one thing is remaining that is the delete action that's what we are going to do next all right then since the data is successfully integrated in the front end now what we need to do we need to trigger this delete action so let's go ahead and create the route for our delete action so click the app over here and right after that i'm going to create a separate route over here so press enter so this is the delete route so at app dot route at app dot route route so that is going to be the delete route and delete i'm going to delete it and i need to supply the parameter so i'm going to supply the int okay i'm going to supply the int and that parameter name is going to be id so we are using the wrapper over here i'm wrapping that parameter and we are converting it to an int over here all right so then define delete method i'm supplying that id into this function then i'm just going to say db dot collection let me copy this collection name from here copy this collection name paste it db dot collection dot task list dot i need to use the document so i'm just copying this document and id copy this okay i'm converting into a string by using this formatted string option okay then i'm going to set delete i'm going to use the delete method to delete an object if you search go to the documents over here if you search for delete data from firestore if you search for that oh spelling mistake delete data from cloud firestore and if you search for python so look at that you need to give the collection you need to supply the document name and you need to use the delete method to delete it from the firestore all right so now since we do have the id and we supplied the collection name id name and delete once it's successfully deleted i'm just going to redirect the user to return redirect to the user slash to the home route itself inside the home route user the data will be fetched again and the new data will be passed to the task so that this list will get updated so let's get make sure everything is working fine all right and currently if you click it nothing will happen because we haven't passed this url from the front end so what i can do is i need to go to the home.html go back to the home.html change the language mode to html so it is not necessary to change the language mode every single time unless if you're able to write everything by yourself instead of without object uh, suggestions all right if you don't want the html code suggestions you can use that mode itself in this case where is the delete key the delete 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 oh this is the one place where we are sending that delete option what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap this into an anchor tag cut it anchor tag inside the href i'm just going to say delete slash i'm going to send the id so the id name is going to be task dot id i'm getting the task dot id and i'm sending it then i'm going to paste it inside this anchor tag i'm pasting that so whenever i'm clicking this it will send to the url to delete with the id will fetch the id in the backend and will be deleted from the firestore now let's see click it and look at that it's successfully deleted it's working perfectly so let's go ahead and make sure whether it is deleted from the firestore or not task something added is successfully deleted from the firestore so we successfully integrated the entire operations let's create a new task over here uh, project done click it so that will be added to our firestore look at that it's added and if i want to delete it so that will be deleted and the list will get instantly updated so let me delete everything delete it look at that if that is nothing currently everything is deleted no documents so that's the reason it's showing no task so uh, what is the task 
need to upgrade my programming skills of course i need to upgrade a lot of programming skills so click add look at that so our first task is added let's add it need to do a lot of hard work click add so that will be added to the top of the list look at that so we successfully finished and our flask app is successfully running in the local host in the um in the website as a website now we need to convert this into one gui so that's what we are going to do next all right then since we successfully finished the entire work now what we need to do we need to convert this into our uh, gui so that's the reason we installed a package called web gui so now we are going to use the web gui package so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add that i'm going to import the web gui so right after here from uh, not from we can use the import statement directly itself import flask web gui look at that we have the flask web gui and what i need to do is i need to create an object for the gui so let uh, after here where the config is initialized i need to create that object for the gui so g gui is equals i'm going to i'm going to say that as flask web gui dot flask ui and i'm going to say an object as the say the changes so that will be successfully done flask web gui is equal to flask ui app is equal to app so now what I need to do instead of running it in the web, I'm just going to say GUI dot run. That's it. So let's stop the server over here. Stop it. And let's save it. And now let's run it. So look at that. It's running that application. Okay, so now this is a GUI instead of this running in a browser, it's running it in the GUI. But the problem is you can see that the Flask, Flask Web GUI, it's immediately closing our backend server connection. That will create a problem for us. It's because now if I'm adding something, it will throw an error because our backend server connection is closed. To do that is to avoid that, what you need to do is go ahead and go to their Flask search for Flask Web GUI. You search for that you can find their official doc and in the first line itself you can see for framework selector below in your app run the code to keep your server alive endpoint okay that will keep your server running when your gui is running until when your gui is running without this code the server will be closed in a few after seconds once it's created all right so we don't need to uh, we need to overcome that effect so I'm just going to copy this line completely, no changes, copy it and then go to your index and right after this script over here, initially, I need to keep making it. So, and it will show some error also. You can see you will get a 404 error in the browser console. Don't worry about this. It's just a JS script, just inform each three seconds that the GUI is still open okay so you don't need to get because once you start running it it will get that error so we don't need to worry about that error because it just keeps saying that our server is up and running all right so let's start it again all right it's loaded over here so now let's keep make sure and you can see it's showing an error 404 404 404 it's just indicating it where we are getting keeping the server online all right so no issues on that let's try it converted into GUI hit the add and that will be added over here the list is added and if I try to delete it and that will be deleted so we successfully converted as a GUI now the only one step is remaining we all need to export this GUI into an executable file so that's what we are going to do next all right then since we successfully completed the far project and we everything is done so far so all right then since we successfully completed the project now what we need to do is we need to convert this gui into an executable file 
So, but uh, it will throws an error. So that is an issue. What is an issue is when we are converting an application. So it will throws an issue like it couldn't load the config.py and it couldn't load the service account.py. We will get that error exactly. So what we need to do is we need to change the way of accessing the config.py and the service accounts.key. So what we need to do is we need to keep this both of the config.py and service account.json in a separate folder. Okay, so let me show you what error we will get. So let's use the py installer to generate the application. So py installer. Okay, so now I need to name my file iPhone iPhone name is equals to do. Okay, that's the name of my file. And I need to convert it into one, one file that is a exe file. So hyphen hyphen one file. Then I need to add the data hyphen hyphen add data equal equals double quotes templates i need to add the templates folder in the name of templates itself templates make sure the spelling is everything is perfect templates templates and hyphen hyphen add hyphen data equals static colon static so now both of the folders are get added and then we need to compile our app.py and we don't need to get that console so no console no console okay so that will remove the console otherwise some backend console will keep on running on it so now py installer name to do one file and we need to add the paths we missed one path so we need to add a path to um so hyphen hyphen paths we need to give the paths of our site site packages so inside the environment variable you can see the library inside the library i have the python and inside the python folder i have the site packages so you need to give the site packages location of your folder so paths equals i need to it's better i can copy this copy the path and i can paste it over here oh my god so i can delete this from here just you need to give env slash library slash python 3.10 site packages in if you're using a windows you need to if you go to the encrypts env file you can find the capital l library file lib capital l inside the library you have the site packages if you're using mac you need to go to nv lib python 3.10 site packages and this is platform independent if you're exporting this application from mac it will runs only in the mac if you're exporting the application from the exe uh, that means windows it will execute only in the windows okay now let me run this so that will start generating it and you can see that it's ready it's generated the spec file and it start building the build and the dist directory inside the dist directory we do have the applications so it's successful and you can see that we have that application over there so let me go there go to my folder and where is it to the list dist folder and here we go that uh, exe file and this is that exe file so let me start this command line so so it's opening that command line because i'm running through command line so it's opening it and it will throws an error that the car couldn't load the config and it couldn't load that service account.js let's show you and look at that it's showing that it can't load that config.py file because config.py file is in the root directory we didn't add that file because we can't add that file from directory over there so it's an easy way to do that what we can do is just create a new folder in the root directory called config and bring your py file into that config config.py file move it to there and move your service account to that config folder and now in the app.py instead of loading this in this way delete it we don't need it over there delete it and instead of loading in this way I can copy this file relative path copy the file copy the relative path and then give that relative path over here paste it okay so now the config folder inside the config file will be loaded and it will extract the base directory location so that the config folder will access the service account.js okay so now the config folder will be added now what i need to do is i need to add this config folder also into my application so to do that I'm just going to add one more path over here that is hyphen hyphen add data equals 
that's my folder name that is going to be config colon config close the bracket so press enter and that will start rebuilding it so in some point of time it will ask you to do you want to overwrite it or not or something else it will ask something if it is asking so here it's showing aborted okay so i didn't press anything but it's showing aborted it asks you s or no to ignore this what you can do is you can run the command call hyphen hyphen no confirm okay so that will not ask you again the same confirmation so rebuild it again now it's showing successfully compiled so go to the spec folder and inside that you can able to see all the folders which you added the data folders which you added it successfully added now let me go to the to do list over here let me open the command line again make sure that it doesn't throws any error so it's loading in case if there is no error it doesn't throws any error okay look at that there is no error so application is started running okay so instead of i i started instead of running this exe the v the file which i have here instead of running that i trigger this command line that's the reason i'm it's showing the command line for me otherwise it will not show that command line so let me close this terminate it and close it and now if i run this from there it will take a few seconds to load but it will definitely get loaded so let me wait until it's get loaded so yeah here we go so now it's not opening my console and our application is up and running fine the ui is up and running fine let me make check something over here generated gui click add and look at that it's added if i want to delete it click that so that will get deleted cool right so we successfully generated our gui into an executable file and please make sure this will work only in the mac because we generated only for the mac so if you're exporting the gui from the windows it will work perfectly in the windows so we made a few changes nothing but we just put the config and service account in the config folder and we added it in this command if you expand it you can see that command over here and this is the command we use to export our file i leave the command in the in the command in the description below so that you can copy it and you can paste it and please make sure this path give this exact location of your site packages if you are using windows this l will be a capital and you don't have the folder called python 3.10 if you are using mac you should give the exact location of your site packages i hope you guys saw enjoy this session and enjoy this course so if you have any questions or any doubt leave the comment in the description below i will help you back okay i'll see you on in the next course